now that your wheel is off, the next step, you may still have the screws uh, in your rotors here. Uh, to get them off, I'm sure you're gonna need an impact uh, screwdriver. Uh, you can pick those up, you know, Napa or something like that, but um, you might need those if you still have those screws because a lot of times those things get um, just basically corroded into there. Uh, worst case, you may have to drill them out. They really don't do anything um, but get stuck and corroded. Then after doing that, uh, your next step is gonna be taking off the bolts on the caliper. Now these are obviously not stock calipers, uh, but they're all the same how they hold on. So you're gonna have two bolts. I'm trying to get a, a good view for you here. Let me try moving it around. All right, I'm hoping you can see this. Um, you're gonna take off the bolts here and here. Now you can take off the smaller bolts that will actually remove your caliper. Again, this is a different setup, but you're gonna be taking off the main big bolts that hold your entire caliper on. And then once you get that off, that's when you'll hang it up out of the way. You can also see while we're back here, you can see these four bolts. These have been replaced with something other than factory. Those are what actually holds your hub in place. So you're gonna be taking those off uh, after we get the caliper out of the way. After pulling your brake caliper off, make sure you hang it. Uh, my car, I've taken the fender well liners out, so I've just got it hooked with some bungee cords. You don't want it hanging by the uh, brake line itself. That will damage your stuff. So, you know, hook it to the uh, spring, hook it to whatever you can, but do not let it hang uh, by the brake line. Make sure you tie it up with a bungee cord or a metal wire or something uh, just to get it out of the way. Okay, so right here is gonna be the factory connector. This is your ABS sensor, and it's also used in the DSC. And so I've got just a little precision flat blade screwdriver, and it's hard to tell, but there's a circle part here. That is the part that's gonna stay with the hub. So just this part from, if you can see it from here back, is gonna come out. So you're gonna take your screwdriver in there, and there's a little tab on the bottom here, and it needs to go towards the ground. That's how you're gonna get that disconnected. So there you go. So on the back side of this, just fit it just inside here. And then as you push in, turn it a little bit and you'll see this bottom piece go towards the ground. It will go down and that's where it disconnects. And then just kind of, you know, easily bring it off there. You know, you see how easy that comes off? Be careful, you don't want to break this stupid connector. So that's how it goes off. Then just set that out of the way so that uh, you don't smash it with a hammer here in a little bit. Okay, so your sensor on the back side is disconnected. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen the four bolts holding the actual hub assembly on. Now, I've already got mine out um, because again, I'm putting this video together as I put it back together. Um, but what you'll do is you'll loosen them um, the bolts out, and I loosen them until um, they're uh, right at first just flush with this, because what it will do, see if I can show you on the back side, right here, see how you've got the space in between the head, you know, right here? Loosen all four of those bolts to, you know, roughly that far out, and you're gonna actually hit these on the head. Now you're gonna destroy these bolts in this process, so you're gonna have to replace them. The replacement bolt, it's a 10 millimeter by 1.25 pitch, and they're 45 millimeters long. So in hammering them out, you will mess up the heads on them, like this one here, um, but you just go back and forth. So you hammer on this top one, you hammer on the bottom one underneath here, on the back side, let me show you, there you go, this one here, and then you just jump over to the other side, hammer on the top one, and then you hammer on the bottom one, and it's just a little bit on each side. Now you're gonna need a decent sledge. Uh, I use this, uh, it's probably well, like a two pound sledge or something like that, so I use this. Just smack it on the back side. don't hit your sensor. If you miss and hit your sensor, you are gonna have to replace your wheel bearing if you want um, all your stuff to work. So just be careful, go back and forth, and once it gets a little bit loose, your dust shield will start to wiggle. That's when you can spray PB Blaster down in there and it will um, help loosen it up even more. But just go back and forth, take your time. Um, what I did is I put the key in it and then I turned the knuckle, you know, side to side to allow more access to hit it with the hammer. So I would, you know, turn it uh, to the right and hit on the front. Then I would turn it to the left and then I'd hit on the back. Just go back and forth and you'll end up getting it to the point where it just falls right out. Okay, so I've got the wheel bearing out 
and inside, I don't know if you'd call it the race or what you want to call it, but where it actually sits, you can see just some of that crud and corrosion that's in there. Kind of hard to see. Let me, I always need more lighting, but just inside this rim here is what I want you to see. But you can kind of see that grown up, um, just road debris and rust and garbage uh, that gets in there. That's why the wheel bearing is hard to get out in the first place. So. All right, so you're just gonna take your wire brush. Uh, I find this is the easiest way to do it. Just put it in a drill. Just get in there and clean it out as well as you can. Anything is better than nothing. Now I've already cleaned this out a few times. I actually already finished the other side. And as I got done with this, I thought, you know what? I ought to do a how-to video because everything's about replacing the wheel bearings. And uh, you'll find that when people are replacing their wheel bearings, they do not care how they get the old one out because it's garbage anyway. Well, my wheel bearings are fine, so I don't see any reason to replace them. Yeah, when they do go bad, I will have to do this all over again, but everything's gonna be cleaned and have been uh, taken apart, I'm gonna say recently. So it won't be nearly as big of a job next time I have to do this. And doing this, it does not take that long. It's really not a big deal. The whole reason why I'm doing this, I'll show you this uh, over here. So I got these um, Willwood Super Lights on here, and this car is actually an LS1 uh, Mazda RX-8 that I do track events with, and I also drive it on the street. And so I want a little more braking power up front. I'm running Carbotech pads, uh, XP10s on the front, XP8s on the rear, and um, they work great. So um, the whole reason why I'm doing this job is just to pull these lugs out because with my wheels, which are uh, inky RPF ones, uh, with a, they're 18 by nine and a half with a 38 offset. They wouldn't clear the calipers unless I ran a five millimeter spacer. The problem with running a five millimeter spacer is you're real close on how many lugs or how many threads are actually grabbing on your lugs. I had six turns before it was full torque down um, and I'm not comfortable with that. So I'm actually replacing these and I'll show you how to press them out. Um, I'll go ahead and put it in this video, even though this is probably just for people that are doing wheel bearings, but uh, the information will be in this video as well. So cleaned up that uh, pretty well. You know, I can still feel it, but you know, it's gonna be as, about honestly as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. This car's a 2004, it's 2021 right now when I made this video. And what I'm doing also is I'm gonna clean up this face since I'm putting this wheel bearing back in. There's no reason to put uh, this nasty crap uh, all back in there and run into the same problem when I do actually have to replace the wheel bearing. So let me move you down here. And I apologize if you're getting fan noise. It's uh, it's pretty warm uh, here uh, where I'm at today, even in the garage. So I've got a fan on me. Um, get my wire brush out again, and I'm just gonna go around this face. already see how that's shining up. Now the last one I took actually down to my workshop uh, in the basement, put it in the drill press because it was much easier um, to put some muscle in on it, but this will work just fine. Just go around there, clean it all up. You'll see the stuff coming off. You can see you know how much that has shined up it's really looking a lot better i'll probably end up running this down to the workshop and hitting it with the wire brush on a hitting it with the wire brush on the drill press just so i can uh, get a little more muscle on it and clean it up all right so next up in this uh, we're going to head over to the press and press these lugs out um, if you're not needing to see how to do that if you're just going to uh, watch how to put this back in it's the reverse steps or I'll show you if you want to hang out here and uh, I'll show you a little bit. You can fast forward it to where I'm pressing the lugs out. Fast forward it past that. How's that? Okay, so I'm over here at the press and I'll show you these. These are the um, uh, basically the studs that I'm replacing the factory studs with. This is a JEGS part number. Uh, let me see if I can get to focus on it here. There we go. 65130.
So um, these are actually uh, like real popular with Camaro Corvette guys. That's the same thread um, that the Mazda RX-8 uses as well. And it's um, longer uh, than the factory ones here. I'll show you. This, these are the factory ones that I pressed out of the other lug. And there you go, kind of butt it up so you can see, you know, how much difference uh, that makes. Uh, that's substantial. So uh, a lot more, uh, I don't want to say necessarily gripping power, but there's more threads on it that are going to grip. So as far as pressing these out, um, this is a 12 ton, 12 ton, uh, 12 ton hydraulic press. And uh, they actually pressed out really easily on the uh, other one. So usually all that you've got to do is you've just got to figure out how to get this stupid thing positioned in here uh, so that you can press these out. Now I'm using a socket um, to get it in here. One thing you definitely want to be careful of is do not break off this sensor. Um, if you break that off, uh, you're going to be replacing your wheel bearing because at that point you've lost ABS or um, what is it, DSC, I think it is. Uh, my car doesn't have DSC, but it does have ABS, uh, so I'd rather not break those off. So um, supporting it under here um, so it doesn't bend this hub. I, you know, it'd take a lot of power to do it, but my luck, I would, uh, I would definitely be able to do it. And you'll see how easily these press out. It just, it couldn't be more easy. 15 years later, when I get this press to actually touch, Come on. All right, so um, that is not much pressure. I'm not pushing on anything on the sensor. You know, it's all on the lug, all on the stud. And there you go. It's just dropping it right out. No big deal. All right, so there's one. And just take it around here real quick. And these, these come out so easily uh, when you've got the right tool. So just, you know, a press, go to a buddy's house, use their press. Someone, someone you know has a press. And if you're doing this type of work, then um, honestly, it's, it's worth having one. Get my arm out of the way here. There we go. Again, like this is not much pressure on the press at all, which is always really nice. Um, you know, you're not stressing anything. You're not... You're not gonna break or bend anything. You know, again, always be careful with that sensor. Look at what, you know, you're pressing against on the on the bottom side, on the opposite side of what you're actually pushing out. Because that will certainly ruin your day if you mess it up. I had to get a little creative uh, putting the new ones in. Um, but nothing crazy and uh, when I do them I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here it's always easy when you see someone else do it you know I mean you can see how quick this is you know this, this video, video hasn't been going this section hasn't been going for four minutes yet and I'm almost done and they press in just as fast. Again, you can see it's loose, I'm not pressing on the cap. There we go, that's the last one. All right, so here is what I'm gonna be using um, actually to press them in. I think I can get majority of them in just putting these two blocks on. Okay, so uh, obviously it's gonna go on the backside here. This is the new, uh, new stud we're putting in. And that would support it nicely right there. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up to get a little closer. So take this down. I'll tell you what, if you're doing repairs at home, uh, these, these presses are a must. You just have to have it. You know, there's so many jobs that you can do with it, whether it be U joints or. Um, you know, pressing in studs like this. I mean, there's, you know, you'll find yourself getting creative whenever you need something that's got some power. I've actually used them to push bearing, or not bearings, but uh, like urethane bushings into this stuff because it was just so much easier. I don't have an arbor press, so I'll use this one. 
and that's going right through you know just make sure on the back side of this you know that's where the groove is so that's where the bug is pressing right down in snug that up nice and tight Take it up a little bit. And there you go, there's the, the new first one pressed in. And I think what I did last time is I got four of them pressed in this way. And then the fifth one, I had to get a little creative because um, they were wanting to hit, uh, the other four were wanting to hit uh, underneath. So let me double check this real quick. There we go. I'm pressing that up straight. see just how fast you know this job is it's just it's such an easy job to do but if you took it to a shop to have done you know if you didn't have the tools you'd more than pay for the tools so if you ever needed to do something like this again you know as long as you got the know-how you know oh, if you got the tools it makes it worth buying or you know, if you got the know-how makes it worth buying the tool so that you can do it um, you, know, you might even be able to make a little money on the side doing some repair jobs uh, for other people. You know, of course, then you guess you gotta worry about liabilities. All right, so this is where, now I'm missing this lug. It's, it's just on this side of the steel beam and the other lug is on the other side of the steel beam. So this is where, you know, it started getting you know, a little different. I don't like that sound, but that was just the, uh, the lug popping in. It's okay. All right, let's take a look here. All right, so this is the fifth one, and this is where you gotta get a little creative. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this back down. Okay, and we're gonna put one of these up here. And here's what I did. So since I've got a press, I've got different types of, uh, uh, what do you wanna call these? Just bearing adapters. You know to fit whatever it needs to fit so all that i did is i grabbed one of my kits checked to make sure this lug would go through it i needed just a little bit more height uh, compared to what the socket had so that was enough to clear it so now I'll show you what we did what i did put this bad boy on here feed the final lug in There you go. Now, none of the other lugs obviously are going to be touching anything. There we go. All right, now we're making contact. All right, let's just press that down in there. There we go. Look at that, less than nine minutes of me talking, setting it up, pressing them out and pressing them in. And now that you've seen how I do it, maybe I'll do it just as quick. So there we go. There's our new, new studs on our hub. Wheel bearing's absolutely fine. Uh, let's go back over and uh, install it here. Okay, so we're back over here at the hub and I'm gonna install it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get out my anises, and it's anises, so when you use it, you're gonna completely cover yourself head to toe in it. I don't care how much you use, or if you have gloves on, whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm just putting some in here. There you go, looks like an absolute mess. All right, so I'm just smoothing it all out. And all that this is gonna do is just help keep that corrosion out of there. Now, if I was putting in a new wheel bearing, I think that's you know even more important since this one, uh, you know, I don't know how many miles it's got on it. I don't know if it's ever been replaced, but I have done, I don't even know how many track days, uh, a lot. I say a lot, um, I don't know, probably 10 on these and they haven't gone out yet. So I'm actually gonna be ordering some here uh, really soon just to have as a backup. Um, so that I can change it off the track if I need to. Now, this is the hub itself, so I'm gonna actually 
I uh, just kind of run my glove along here and get some on here too. It's amazing how far a little bit of this crap will go. So now next time you won't be fighting all that corrosion. It'll be a lot easier. And so in doing this, I ruined the bolts that were holding it on. Um, not a big deal though. Um, I should be able to run up the street and get these, but, um, you know, where I hammered them, uh, it just flattened the face and that's not going to fit into the 14 millimeter socket anymore. So here's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to go ahead and start I'm trying to do this without getting any shadows. So I'm going to run this bolt through here into the back side of the hub and I'm going to go ahead and start it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that on now at least three of the four sides. And that's going to help just kind of guide it in there. I'm just hand tightening these, um, just so that these holes will line up. After I get done taking this video for you guys, I'm gonna uh, again run up the road and get new bolts to replace these. I'm not getting you know, factory Mazda or anything like that. It's just a bolt, but I do need to look if they're grade 10 or grade eight or whatever the heck they are. So, all right, so that's pretty good. And it, it's amazing how much easier it goes in there. Um, grab your rubber mallet. And this is just a, you know, dead blow. So, you know, nothing crazy. I'm just hitting around the hub. And just make sure that you're doing it evenly around the hub. Uh, so if not, you're gonna go in crooked and it's gonna end up binding up. So I'm just tightening those bolts a little bit more just to make sure that's, oh, wrong hammer, here we go. back a little bit so I can actually get some leverage here. Oh, there it goes. And once it goes, <clears throat> the crazy thing will you know, go right in. <clears throat> now, one thing you might notice is I did not put the heat shield back in um, on a, a track car. It uh, actually helped it. It keeps some of that heat in the rotor. Well, I want the, all the heat as I can to get out of the rotor. On the street, it's, it would protect, protect against like road debris and crap. Um, so that's up to you whether you put it back in or not. Also, they do make uh, various, I think, well, various, at least one company makes brake vents that would go right there. So if you're wanting to do that type of thing, now would have been the time to do it. Um, and then you can run brake ducting from the front or from your radiator shroud or wherever you might have it. Um, so that, is on. Um, the bolts are all lined up. I'm going to actually pull these bolts back out. Like I said, I'm replacing them, so I don't need to leave them in right now. Now is when you would connect um, your connector back on. Um, your, your, your ABS sensor on the back side or ABS DSC uh, sensor on the back side of it. And all right, next up we'll, uh, we'll put the brakes and stuff all back on. Okay, back under here, we've got the hub in. I don't have these bolts in yet because remember, I'm gonna replace them, but I am gonna go ahead and put my connector on. You can hear the snap. It's nice and in there, it's out of the way. Hey everybody, so I'm actually editing this video in the back of the vehicle while I'm waiting for my mom to get out of eye surgery so I can drive her back home. And I uh, just wanted to tell you at this point, you're just gonna be putting in those four bolts uh, on the backside of the wheel bearing hub assembly and tighten those down to specs. Now, um, I'm not gonna give you what those torque specs are because I have seen where torque specs can change. So um, just, uh, you can go online and just type it in. You'll, you'll find whatever the most current specs is or are on those four bolts. But you're gonna tighten in those four bolts. You've already connected your ABS sensor. And then the next step is gonna be putting on your brake calipers. So you'll just uh, disconnect uh, your brake calipers from how you have them hanging and you're going to uh, put in those two bolts on the back sides make sure to torque those down again actually before you put on that caliper make sure you put on the brake rotor that makes sense right so put on your brake rotor um, and then put on the caliper torque those back down and then that's it you're ready to put your wheel back on
Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if it helped you out, uh, you know, leave a message in the comments. Uh, give it a like. Um, think about subscribing. I, I do uh, how-to videos here and there. Uh, my channel kind of has all sorts of stuff. It just depends on whatever I'm uh, interested in at the time or working on. But I uh, hope it helped you guys out.